unprecedented times indeed. We were checking our Twitter this morning to see where we were. Um, and as James said, we were asked to think about the biggest impacts that Brexit and further devolution will have for Wales in Wales over the next five years. And obviously my immediate thought was, well, hang on, will we have Brexit in the next five years? Will we have any further devolution in the next five years? Um, and first of all, if we take Brexit, I think it's likely that we will see some form of Brexit in the next five years. There's no certainty necessarily about that. I think if you just take this week, you know, the way that things are vacillating, we had a, a moment this week where it looked like the second referendum, referendum was part of that withdrawal agreement offer that was being made to MPs for them to give their support to the withdrawal agreement. And of course, you know, as far as how that second referendum may plan out, pan out, you know, um, I think everything is, is open on that. We have no certainty for anything there. Um, but obviously it's now crashingly clear there's not going to be any movement on the withdrawal agreement. There's not going to be a withdrawal agreement bill necessary for us to be getting our teeth into over the bank holiday weekend, which of course we all had planned because it was supposed to be coming today. Um, but we, we have the prospect of a search for a new prime minister and one that will, you know, yeah, part of that search there will be some that will be there very much on a hard Brexit ticket, um, perhaps emboldened when we see the results from the European election. We'll see this weekend how that's looking. As to what kind of Brexit, uh, there was a collective sigh of relief from many, but not all, of course, as we passed through those no deal deadlines in March and then in April. But we will no doubt found ourselves back on the no deal precipice when October comes around. But how we leave is only the first step in the process. Uh, we then have to work out what our new relationship with the European Union is going to be, and what Wales' place is, and the consequences for Wales in that, that new relationship that we have with the EU and with the wider world. So, some of those questions about that new relationship, we may just be starting out to work out what that looks like in five years' time. Will there be further devolution? Well, we know... We're here sort of celebrating 20 years of this current devolution experiment. Um, and we see that story of Wales's progress. We see Wales perhaps coming the furthest of the devolved nations. It started in a very different place from Northern Ireland and from Scotland. But where it is now is a settlement that, of course, is not, equipped, is not identical, but is <coughs> very close to that that Scotland has. Um, it's, we've seen Wales' devolution settlement shift closer to that of Scotland, that move most recently in the Withdrawal Act, sorry, the Wales Act 2017, to a reserved powers model for Wales. But there are still very clear differences in the different approaches, but we have to recognise they started in very different places, with very different histories, and also very different trajectories, very different political trajectories, where these different places want to go. Um, recent polling, I saw a recent poll in terms of how the Welsh public are responding to devolution and we generally see they're not entirely sure, we're not entirely sure whether this has improved governance, has improved outputs necessarily, but there's always a, a sort of a strong demand that we have at least the same powers as Scotland. You know, there's always a majority, we need to have you know, exactly what Scotland has. Um, but I think, whilst there's that, demand for things to go further in some ways, we've seriously got to question whether there is any appetite over the, the sort of the immediate, the next few years period to engage in any further revision or refinement of the existing settlement. I mean, it's been in that process of constant evolution over the past 20 years, but whether there's just going to be the capacity or the bandwidth to do anything around that rather than just see how the the ongoing changes are bedding in and how they are playing out within the sort of the changed circumstances of Brexit. But we may see it. You know, there is some on the horizon, there is some on the agenda, there is the Commission on Jurisdiction, the separate jurisdiction of Wales, that is set to report later this year. And we may see pressure for a, a resettlement in some way if we see Brexit unraveling or, or taking place in a way that um, 
sees the EU no longer operating as a backstop for minimum standards in areas of social rights and employment rights, and if we see policies that may be damaging to the economic and social fabric of Wales, that there may be a demand for a shift to more of a role, or is a devolved competence in things like employment law, in things like immigration. We know that Scotland has made some asks to have certain roles in relation to immigration and visas. Um, so perhaps a, a call for some resettlement and redefinition of what is reserved and what is devolved. But I think, and this is my particular point, is I think looking ahead, we're going to need to think differently about our ideas of what is reserved and what is devolved and think differently about categories like that. Um, and more about how we manage competences and work together across areas where in fact these are shared, these are overlapping, these are concurrent. And I think we're going to have to try and make sense of how we work in that space. Um, because in some ways with devolution, we've pretended almost that we don't really do concurrent powers. We don't really do shared powers. We have that sort of self-rule in, in certain areas. Things are, are operated, they are devolved. Um, we talk about sort of a hyper-dualist system, a system where we have devolved, devolve and then forget in some ways. But of course, Policy has been made within that context of EU membership. And that's been done within a multi-leveled cooperative framework, that framework that e, the EU policy framework, the architecture that the EU provides for the exercise of those powers. So the EU provides the channels so much of that policy making, and it provides a particular set of guiding principles that have been broadly supportive to devol devolution and devolved interests. And what we're going to face quite quickly is what's going to happen when that is no longer there to intercede between central UK government and Parliament and the devolved nations. What happens when we're no longer part of a, an architecture which has a commitment to constitutional principles like subsidiarity? You know, we have that as part of our system through our membership within the EU. It's, it's there within the system because of that. And when that's taken away, what is left. And we're going to have to think very fundamentally about how governance is done in the future. And Hugh is going to take us there. <laughs>